here we are. Welcome back to another trash cast. Your host Matthias here, along with my regular boy and a new and our returning guest, John and Greg. Welcome back, Greg. Glad to have your input on this Death Guard stuff. I'm sure you've seen. Yep, it's exciting. Good. But first, we'll get to that at the end. Let's just jump into this stuff. Um, just the first thing we got here is the underworld stuff. Wow, we're finally getting a look at those uh new skinka models that they've been teasing forever. Yes. So. Uh, I'm a little disappointed. I thought we'd get a little bit more out of this. I didn't think we were going to just get a full skink army. Well, I'm, I don't know. Warband, I guess is the right word. thought they'd have a little bit more wizard men, but seeing how this is uh, new sculpts, what are, you, what are you thinking, John? Are you thinking this is good? I do agree. I think, more? That, I think that it would have been nice to see a, a bigger Seraphon release. Seraphon, by the way, are like broken as hell in the OS right now. Fun fact. Um, but yeah, like I mean, for under, it's great. I mean, I love this release in itself. It's a new Underworlds Warband for a cool Warhammer concept, which is you know Seraphon slash Lizardmen, Aztec dinosaurs. Everyone's seen the memes, and it's just these are the newest Lizardmen sculpts since. Age of Sigmar came out. Um, I think the last ones we've had were during Warhammer Fantasy, so having new stuff is great. I got a cool old blood on foot there. Got a new skink. I think it's skink chieftain or priest. I'm not sure. Uh, the one uh, this is great for Warcry. So, okay, there goes skink high priest. Perfect. But yeah, it would have been nice to have a bigger lizardman release. But hey, man, it's it's new models for Underworlds. It's new models for Warcry, and you know that's. Some new models to act for a that's a skink priest for AOS, some a Sauros Old Blood for AOS, I guess a one chameleon skink for AOS. So I'm excited for it. I'm picking this up for sure because I love the concept of Blizzard Men and Seraphon. So it'd be it'd be kinda cool to paint up and all that. Just to have. Bob, how do you uh, feel about the design? Because you know, this is it's practically the future of their redesign, because I know they're in desperate need of a new sculpt. I think I'm. I like that they're not radically different from what they are. Honestly, if you look at the Lizardmen line, it's actually pretty nice. I just wish we would see resculpts, HD resculpts of Soros Warriors, Soros Guard, and Cold One Knights. The rest are, I, I think, I think Skinks are fine as is. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Warriors of Chaos slash Slaves of Darkness are a good example of just HD resculpts of the classic models like if you look at the the new chaos warriors compared to the old ones they're essentially the same model just reposed with more detail the reposing i think is big same for chaos knights they're essentially well it's kind of a, a mix of the old metal chaos knights and the last plastic ones with the, these new ones are beefier with capes and all that so sure. i think it's uh it's that which is something i think we've echoing what we, what we have talked about in past episodes of new armies versus or in AOS having a lot of new armies I think I wish Games Workshop would just focus on redesign not re like resculpting or making the old sculpts more modern like this like I wish we would have a unit of that Saurus guy or our Saurus guard unit looking like him I don't know if that's likely happening, considering they're relatively new and plastic. But then again, Chaos Warriors were resculpted last year, so it's very, very possible. And I wish they would do that instead of releasing new armies. I mean, I love Medipkin, I love Caradrons, I love... Um, I think Lumineth are cool for your high elf fans, but I do wish that they would just look at the old stuff and then just resculpt them. And and yeah, that's that's my that's my hot take on that. The extra dude adds they add to all the new models or the new sculpts are really like I think the big selling factor. It like makes a big difference if you mm -hmm. lose some grenades or like an extra spear to a dude versus not having it there. So having just the extra dude adds in the sprue with the models is I think the biggest part. True, but then you get into that whole raising the cost of the models, which you know 
no big surprise coming from GW with how much we spend on this plastic crack. Right. It, it's the comparison between the uh, the Castellan and the Gargans from AOS. I mean, the cast the Castellan would be the same price as the Gargan if it had all the options there. I think it's like a twenty thirty dollar increase, which people who could magnetize wouldn't mind, but that does jack up the price of the model significantly. Mm-hmm. So it's the eternal debate. I mean, I like my bits here and there, but sometimes it's just too much. Like I think the Skitari Ranger box where you, you have enough bits for a whole nother unit minus the bodies. Um versus like an intercessor squad where you the leftover bits aren't that crazy, which means this the cost of the box isn't that high. So it's 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 that sliding scale. I have no real opinion. Oh, not opinion. I have no real solution for it because I mean, some people love their bits. Some people would love less bits. Um, yeah, I th- I think we'll see a mix of the the two styles moving forward. Well, I mean, a standard Saurus box is what uh, spears and swords, right? Yeah. And there's no official temple guard, is there? There is. There's plastic temple guard. Okay, I, I couldn't. Um, now they're, they're newer sculpt, so they're not like the old. They they look way more. They're not new, but they wait, look way better than the source warriors, which have, you know, are probably old enough to like buy buy a drink. <laughs> but it would be nice. Like if chaos warriors really set the bar for that, you could do this with the old stuff. You could make them look cool and modern and still keep the design because the design works. Lizard man seraphon, the design works. It's unique. It's dope. And I don't think we need to move away from that the same way they moved away from like Lumineth and High Elves kind of thing. You could just use the original designs and just like repose them, make them look more dynamic and all that. Hmm. Okay then. Well, um, we got some cards. I don't know. Do you want to talk about these? This is more of your department. Any of these good or? Uh, I like that the the inspire mechanic isn't crazy because a lot of the other factions they have some crazy inspire mechanic like jump jump on the enemy deployment zone, turn two to inspire, and make an attack. This one just hold three objectives, cool. I haven't played Underworlds in a long, 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 long time, so I can't really tell on if these yeah. are great or not. In fact, I don't, I'm don't. i not super hyped to play these for Underworlds. It's just I just want these models, maybe for Warcry. And I mean, I have the cards. So I can just play Underworlds whenever with this box. But no, no real comment on, on how this Warband plays, to be honest. Mm, OK. And uh, we're assuming this model at the bottom here is going to be the vampire. I think it's a vampire. Well, okay then. I just wanted to go over the models and see what we got there. Get our opinions and feedback on that since, you know, usually this will tell us what what the model direction is going to go. So moving on, go to uh, kill teams. And... uh, uh, they're, they're bringing this back with updated rules, apparently. And uh, there's not really much here going from what I can tell, other than, you know, we're getting assault intercessors now, which I don't know where, if they were a part of it because they didn't play Space Marines back then, which uh, doesn't look anything too crazy going from what I'm seeing here. Uh, we got Necrons. Which is pretty big. Well, yeah. Well, I assume everyone's going to be getting that update. Yeah. Uh, then we got the Necrons, which I think the really only thing they showed here was the uh, stratagem that they get. Being able to shoot twice, only if they kill someone. And the only reason I really wanted to bring this up was because I'm like, wow, look at these unique Necron warriors. I've never seen these heads before because, you know... I gave uh, John all my Necron warriors because I'm like I already have a hundred of these from back in the day, <laughs> and then I look these guys up in the store. I'm like, oh, these are just standard Necrons. These aren't these aren't anything special. No, they're just warriors because the Indominus, well, the new Necron warriors have actually have head options, which is kind of cool. There's the this regular head, and there's like a more damaged repair. Head. Like you can see in the bottom picture, I'm sure there's the guy who was where half his his face is like his bottom jaw is missing. So yeah. there's stuff like that in the kit, which is kind of cool. My, minor, like, plastic resource use. Or, sorry, my, it's like, you know, it's not a lot of plastic, but it does let you customize your squads a bit, which is cool. Yeah, give them a little unique. But, uh, yeah, there wasn't much here. I just wanted to bring up the fact that they're uh, bring it back 
I mean, I think it's big Bring news that team. in the sense of like we're, they're reminding us Kill Team exists still, considering we haven't had Kill Team release in over a year, e even before the pandemic. It, it's, it was several, it was like six months or, or more before we had a Kill Team release in 2019. So, well, I mean, well, in, my exists, guys, opinion, yeah. in my opinion, they kind of killed it when they started releasing all the heroes and the elites i mean the elites made sense but when you started introducing the heroes that's when it's kind of went down a little bit you could say the same thing with the elites because uh, i mean i don't know i'm not a big fan of kill teams as we've gone over in, in the past i uh what's your take on this greg you happy about kill teams coming back i never really touched it Never touched it, huh? Totally honest, and really had a fair chance to. So I can't have my opinion. I played the eighth edition version or seventh edition run, whatever that was called for a bit. And that was kind of cool. Shadow War Armageddon. I was with that, and that was yeah. kind of, but it's just like, I'll just play a full game of 40K instead or Sigma or whatever. I, I like Shadow War Armageddon, actually. I thought it was uh, pretty good. From what little I played of it. I didn't play much of it, but I did play it. So it was a little bit of a disappointment when Kill Team kind of came out and replaced the, that entire game system. I like the idea of it, though, smaller stuff. But it's just hard to get into another thing and another thing and another thing, so... Mm -hmm. Well, it's, the, it's supposed to be that, you know, little, little gateway drug, right? Here you go. Here's a box of Necron Warriors. Now you can play this game because you don't need an, you don't need anything else. You just need these box of ten warriors. And that's what the that's what the game's supposed to be. Just like how Warcry is like, you know. Here you go. You just need this box of skeletons, and then bam, you're ready to play the game. That's what Kill Team is. Uh, I like to refer to it as a gateway drug. And then once you know, once they get hooked on it, then they start buying their all the models to play the bigger games. Yeah, that's unfortunately what the sad reality is. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, and there's not much to talk about because unfortunately they didn't give us really anything to talk about about kill teams. Just, I mean, remind reminding us it exists. I think is pretty big news for kill team fans. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know. So, moving on. Uh, we got a, the FAQ, an FAQ update. Which, uh, did you guys happen to take a look at any of this? There were some, uh, some pretty big changes. Yeah, I saw, I saw the big stuff. Uh, mostly points changes for, for most armies, but just, yeah, there's some big changes there from what, I, from what I've seen. Yeah, so... <laughs> The Psychic Ritual one is the one that got me because I've always been playing it how this fact was written so people with stratagems could always just deny it. I didn't realize, and I've probably lost numerous games now, playing it the way of the fact is currently where you can use the Corn Deny or the Black Templar Deny or whatever. Oh. So, so wait, what? Can... So apparently before this fact, the only people who could deny like a Psychic Ritual would be a Psyker. So if there was no psychers, you're making that trade-off where they'll take up Horror the Witch and kill all my big demons, but I can sit in the center of the board and cast Psychic Ritual. I always play, but I played against people who have all the deny stratagems, right? So these deny stratagems, now they work versus the psychic uh, actions. I guess previously it was worded in a way where it didn't. But I just assumed you're denying a spell. It's a spell. It works like a spell, so I just played it that way the whole time. No, oh, interesting. I've always just denied all the, all those kind of powers, those secondary mission powers. I didn't know there was a word in there. You couldn't deny those. It's just the stratagems that let you deny stuff. Oh, just the stratagems. You wouldn't do that, yeah. It was uh, only psychic powers. Only psychers could deny psychic actions, I guess, is how it worked before. I didn't realize that, and I guess now it works the opposite way, which is totally fine because that's how I've always been playing it. But that made me laugh. I didn't even—I didn't even catch that. Yeah, I've, I've always just played it to where you just deny it, no matter what. But that's good to know. 
Uh, other changes here. Uh, my poor Satan Nightbringer, I'm sure Greg's happy, is now uh, up 20 points. So that's very sad. I'm not too worried about him now. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm sure he'll still be taken because he's a he's a beast to be. He picks with. up a he picks up anything he touches. That's a chaos demon. So yeah, so he's gone from three fifty to three seventy, and then the canoptic reanimator is going down to one ten to one to eighty. So uh, it's base marines. Uh, which is just funny because I just bought or I just received another uh, Outrider squad and Outriders and Eradicators are going up five points. The Eradicators make sense. I'm a little hesitant on the Outriders. I haven't seen many people take Outriders. Are they, are they that popular? I think they're really good because they give you something. So like most Space Marine armies... You have a death ball in the center, right? And then you have like a unit of intercessors or something standing on your back objective. Mm. So you need your outriders to just go harass stuff that's not in the center of the board. Right. So like a unit of outriders will just go pick up a unit of nerglings and you can keep your death ball in the center pushing forward doing the oath or whatever stratagem. So the outriders just give you that flexibility to go touch stuff that's away from where the main bulk of your army is. Yeah, well, but they're massive in combat, right? They get like six attacks each or something like that if they charge. I'm not sure on their actual stat line, to be totally honest. I just see them as a high value. If you're playing an army that is meant to walk up into the center of the table, you want at least something that's not in the center of the table with it so you can play the rest of the board. All right, get those fast objectives or disruptions. Yep, they give you... They just... They're a great, they're kind of like the Chaos Furies. They're just a great unit that lets you do other things mm -hmm. that you can't usually do. Because, like, obviously, you can raise banners with your Blade Guard because they don't have to shoot stuff. They can just walk forward and raise banners and stuff like that. But the bikes can't do it. That's fine. But the bikers can go get you recon or other stuff like that. All right. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm just going to try these guys out on my next iteration of the black templars and see how they worked out but there's that um and then we got the mission pack yeah. unless you got it you guys see anything yeah. interesting in here uh, but before that out. one one chains for space marines you can no longer revive uh atvs with apothecaries to no one's surprise yeah that's a uh, very sad <laughs> He's no longer a tech priest slash apothecary now. I kind of kind of just missed that. I f totally forgot about that change. That's <laughs> yeah, sad. I mean, if you played against someone who did that it's, it, and bought like six ATVs, it's like, come on, man! It's pretty obvious they're gonna they're gonna fix that. <laughs> Everyone was calling it. They were just surprised that it didn't get fixed in the first patch. Exactly. All right. Uh, so the mission pack, did you guys? I mean, we talked about the psychic denial, psychic action denial. You guys see anything else in here? I thought uh, a couple big ones I found was pretty good. Not big, so. I, mean, I like the, the first turn. Yeah, the yeah, first turn I mean, was like, big. Shaves off like five minutes of decision making at the beginning of the game. I mean, I never. Well, I, depending on the army, I usually never won it first, but. That's uh, that's big now, so no more winning and opting to go second if you wanted to, or having the choice to opt second. Um, where's that one? There's one. Ah, uh, the primary objective taken hold and domination changes for a second player. Being able to score all of those at the end of your turn five instead of uh the beginning. Uh, that uh, that's gonna be a big that's gonna be a big huge swing coming. I approve of it. It kind of balances out. If I recall correctly, the numbers were on like first turn. Whoever went first had like I think fifty eight percent win rate or something, which isn't that insane. But you end up in these. I feel like if you choose to go second, ignore all the numbers or whatever. If you if you're going second, 
and you're going like there's points in the game where your turn doesn't matter like the game's already decided you're like well i can do these two things and that's it that connects me four points whatever it doesn't matter so it lets you play your turn your final turn as the second player true true i just i found it i think that's going to be going to play a big swing in my opinion but now you can't choose to go first or second it's just a dice roll so true you can't choose to do that either. uh there was something else did you guys see anything else i need to look through my notes really fast here anything else that uh, caught your eyes there was a lot of changes in points that were kind of interesting. Are we are we still talking about the uh, the FAQs, the main mission stuff? Uh, we're still talking about the main FAQ. But oh, well, uh, then, that, go ahead, go ahead, and go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I just kind of noticed there's a lot of changes where they would bake, they would make a lot of, they would like bump the points cost of a model, but then make a lot of the weapons free. So it's kind of this weird weird thing where the model would be more or or less expensive depending on you kit it. I think a good example is the Hell Brute. So the Hell Brute went up a bit in points, but like I think all its weapons are free or there was something where like if you took double claws, it would be it's now it's now more expensive. But if you took like last cannon missile launcher, you actually had paid less points overall. Stuff like that. Um, there's some weird interactions. Like right now, it lists the the Chaos Terminators as being able to take a Reaper Chain Cannon, which obviously is a typo. But the interesting part is that means that the Reaper Auto Cannon costs zero points at the moment. <laughs> so that's just kind of funny. Um, I love that unit. So I was looking at the points for that, and it's I think light uh, the power weapons went way down in points. Now there's kind of no reason to take a chain axe because I think power weapons are the same cost for some reason. I think the power swords are free, right? On power, chaos yeah, yeah, power swords are free. yeah power if if yeah power swords and power axes are free and mauls I think I think all the power weapons except lightning claws and the fists are free. So no reason to take a chain axe right now. And I think lightning claw is like stupid cheap to the point where you should probably just take lightning claws if. If you could, if you have the models for it, lightning claw combi bolt. I mean, hmm. that that's what I saw. Okay, uh, I found my notes here. Uh, this is just more on the secondary uh, rules or missions here. Uh, they changed bring it down. Uh, it's now one point for any models with ten wounds or less. Two points for any models with nineteen wounds or less. And three points for any models with 20 wounds or more. So, I don't know how I feel about these changes. These kind of seem, kind of seem bad. Or the bring it down part, at least. Because I don't know many people were going to be bringing monsters that many wounds, right? Or 10 wounds or less. You think these, that's... Is there a buff to that? Because I think you end up giving less points. You end up giving less points, yes. But you also don't get as many points because I don't... What do you mean get uh, points? Oh, for the, the, the one secondary where you, if you survive kind of thing? No, 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 bring yeah. it down. It's one point for destroying a monster vehicle with 10 wounds or less, two right. for 19 or less, and three with or three for 20 or more. So... I mean, there's not many people running that many monsters and vehicles, right? I Twice mean, granted, it's taken against me a lot, and it was kind of annoying. But like, it was always like, well, I already know I'm going to give it that many points, so I'm not too worried about it. So the change to it doesn't really bother me either way. I'm indifferent to it. Yeah. Well, it's just an interesting change. And then we got uh, abhor the witch, which now specifies three points per character and two points per unit instead of just uh i think it used to say just three points per psychic no psychic was it psychic character or just psych psychers because anyway, you got it off pink horrors and you got it off whatever else i brought yeah so now they they've specified it which uh would be good for you know like my thousand sons 
You won't be getting three points for Rubric Marines slash Scarab Terminators and Pink Horrors. I think you still end up maxing it out probably. So it's just now you have to table the person. Yeah, yeah, you still max it out. Like I mean, if you're going against Thousand Sun slash Grey Knights, I mean, I mean, this is a must take secondary yeah. objective right here. But, uh, you know, there's. I mean, it makes them more playable. You're not as gimp playing those armies as right. you would be. Right. Right, right, right. And uh, that's about all I saw in terms of uh, missions that stuck out to me. I don't know. You, did you see anything in Greg that you want to talk about? I kind of covered it all. I really am a big fan of just roll the dice and someone goes first and someone goes second. There's no more hemming and hawing and trying to do like crazy deployment shenanigans where you're like, all I need to do is make sure I'll just deploy incredibly defensive, choose to go second, and then everything's fine. I think it also helps out armies that are really fast, like Harlequins or Dark Eldar or someone, because they can still be very defensive, but then they don't mind going first in some cases, you know? Right. Okay, then. Well, that's that. That's what we're going to talk about in terms of the big FAQ that just dropped. So, Sunday preview. This was on uh, yesterday, the 10th. That, that dropped. So, we got uh, finally the Death Guard book coming out for pre-order this week. About time. Yep. Duh. Thanks, Wait. COVID. Thanks, Papa Nurgle, for finally blessing us. Uh, it also dropped the uh, Combat Patrol. Uh, how do you guys feel about this Combat Patrol? It's kind of a... Uh, I, mean, I mean, we got Typhus in there, so... Of course, we got the Pox Walkers roaming around. We got the Grenade Man in there, which is pretty big, too. I mean, pretty big as of right now. I don't know what he's going to do in the book. He might not be nearly as good, but he's pretty much hand-in-hand -hand with Plague Marines. Uh, one thing I, I like about this combat patrol, two things I don't. One thing I like about it is it's a deal, obviously. Like, if you break it down, you're saving a lot of money. It It's a good base to start a Death Guard army if you're a new person. Uh, now, I do wish there was a big thing in this box, like a bloat drone or something. I kind of feel that star collectings and well, combat patrols now should have some kind of centerpiece, not necessarily centerpiece, like some big unit like i know death shroud or like again a bloat drone or a blight hauler or something i would like that for for these kits just makes them look more impressive and my second criticism is that i for me i i i like the starter sets i.e the combat patrols or star collectings that reward you for buying multiple of them i think a good example is flesh eater courts for age of sigmar you, buying like four of those is is a great thing if you're playing that army because yep. you'll probably be using yeah like yeah you're using four terror guys or two you know or zombie dragons and a crap ton of ghouls and crypt flares this one you're gonna end up having multiples of typhus so unless you want to convert him to lord of contagion q yeah lord contagion you know that's terminator sorcerer there's plenty there's plenty of uses for that model throughout the death guard army because you can't get a lord of contagion right now that's right yeah but I do wish that it, it he didn't it didn't come with a special character, you know. Um, other than that, I mean, this is if you're starting Death Guard or if you don't have Typhus, this is a great buy. Uh, these are these are models majority you will be using. I mean, who, who, Plague Marines are are great from what we've seen, and Pox Walkers. Well, we could talk about that later, but they seem pretty useful. So, uh, it just seems to be the kind of norm of the forty uh, k combat patrols, right? I mean, you, you get one special character. It seems like now. Well, no, none of the other ones. They were just generic HQs. And I, I wish this had that a generic HQ. Well, in terms of chaos. I mean, the Thousand Sun one had Arimon in it. Right, they start collecting. This. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, it, it does have Arimon, which, again, no reason. Like, uh, if you can convert him for to be a sorcerer, but doesn't necessarily come with a, with a generic guy. You could have multiples of kind of thing. But there's no like Chaos Lord HQ model or anything like Death Guard HQ models are fairly old. It's all their elite slots, like the Grenade Man, the Flamey Flame Man. 
Right. So that, that is also maybe maybe it's a trap, not a trap, but like maybe Death Card are in a trap where they don't have an HQ box. Because you're right, there's no way right now to get a Lord Contagion, just interestingly enough. Oh, actually, there will. Wait, it won't. Uh, well, Greg can confirm this when we get to it. Um, okay, so we got the, uh, what the hell is this guy? Lord uh, Virulence or something like that? Yeah, Virulence something, I forgot the full name, but... The, the tank, the tank buffer, right? Yeah. He's coming out. You got the, uh, Miasmic Malignifiers, the terrain piece, which apparently can go... You can place it in the middle of the board if you want. I'm oh. done with that. And here we go. The uh, the three characters from Indominus. Are these any HQs? Because uh, from what I'm hearing, this is going to be a box set. That's uh, the Noxus Brightblinger, which is an elite slot. You have the Plague Caster, which is an HQ. And that guy, I think, could... I use him as a Plague Marine Sergeant. But I guess he could be a Chaos Lord with a Power Fist. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, originally he was just a Plague Marine Sergeant, but that would be cool, actually, if he is now being used as a Chaos Sword with the Power Fist. I would like that, actually. <laughs> yeah, apparently, so this is going to be a box set right here. These three characters. Kind of like the Exalted Sorcerers for a Thousand Suns kind of thing. Yeah, these were previously only available in Dark Imperium, so it's kind of cool seeing them here. Oh, yeah, Dark Imperium. I might have, I said Indominus, didn't I? Damn it. Oh, yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah the uh, Dark Imperium starter set. So we got that. Um, what do we got here? We got cards, book, poster art. No dice. Interestingly enough. The uh, the new Poxwalker model is coming in a box finally. These were also a, a Dark Imperium, right? That's right. Yep. So they're finally getting their own box. You no longer have to uh, convert or use the old models. I don't know if there's ever old models. It's just Plague Zombies or whatever from, like, Fantasy that people were using, right? Is that what they were using? Yeah, it's used Zombies. Yeah, the Fox <laughs> Walker turned new to the, in whatever, Dark Imperium. But you got 20 of them, I think, in the Dark Imperium set? Yeah, you got 20. Yep. Yeah, okay, I did a lot of trading to end up with, like, 60 of them then. <laughs> yeah, but now you're going to get a box of 10. Uh, Middle Earth. I don't have much to say about this. Cool. They're, they exist. Yeah, they you exist. can buy them. They're here. Hobbits, elves, more elves, ring rates, zombies, more ghosts. Necromunda, we're getting a. From House Escher, we're getting the. I don't know what these are. Fry, fry cats is what they're calling it. Uh, I have no comment. Still haven't played much of Necromunda. Still painting up my army. <laughs> Uh, but, once uh, again, this is what Forge World should do. Just make random cool stuff that doesn't fit on an army, and people who want them will buy them. Uh, this is cool. Well, they fit in House Escher. Right. According, <laughs> according to them. They also make nice flesh hounds for corn, you know? No, there flesh you cats. There you go. Uh, new from Forge World. Uh, is this new? I feel like we've seen these before. These two series. Yeah, we've seen these, but in typical Forge World fashion, between revealing them, it's about, like, you know, 10 years before they finally release it. So, finally. All right, this is, like, being released this week. I can't forget. So, there we yeah. go. They're finally finally coming out. And yeah. Black Rally Library cool. would just, you know, skip Alpha Legion if you want that. Get more Book of Alpharius. So, well, we got that. Finally coming out this week, Death Guard. Uh, before we move on to the uh, Death Guard rules and all that, my question to you guys is, do you think we're going to get three armies this month, or do you think uh, Dark Eldar got pushed to February? I think everything got pushed back. Yeah? Yep. I think yeah, we could get a pleasant surprise. I think it just depends on what they, what's further down the line. Maybe if they'll double up much worse. I mean, we're, we're already halfway through this month when Death Guard comes out. So it's looking, looking pretty grim for the Dark Eldar here. Two more weeks. Oh, we'll come out eventually. And plus, uh -huh. we, we haven't gotten any... We haven't gotten any uh, spoilers or teasers for 
the uh the dark angels other than like that land speeder history thing but that was about it yeah that's coming in february hmm. i'm sure i'm sure everything got pushed back because of the the covid lockdown in england thanks death guard thanks for yeah. that all right uh so the uh, the play companies return with new data r- new rules for the codex and death guard is the article that we're looking at right here did you guys happen to take a look at this? What are you thinking about this, Greg? Are you happy with any of this? Yeah, I forgot where the other one was. There's a different contagion that halves the move speed of people. That seems really oppressive, being minus one toughness, having your move speed, and you're just like, you can't run away from anything anymore. That seems a bit ruthless. I don't know about that one, to be honest. Not just like first look. But I don't think that's Nurgle, in this huh? one. Yeah, it's one of the contagions. I forgot which one it was. They leaked it at some point, and I saw it, and I was like, dang, that seems really solid. Are you sure it wasn't part of the Crusade ones? Mm, no, it was definitely one of the, the play company ones. I just don't know why I don't see it anymore. Oh, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at the... Da-da-da-da. I'm looking at the other page that dropped. More contagions. I saw it somewhere. No, I can't find it. Hmm. Here you are, right here. It's uh on the seven of the most uh something Death Guard. It's on number four called More Contagions. Oh, yep, there we go. The droning, right? Yeah, that seems pretty oppressive, especially when like, well, if you get too close to them, now you can never get away from them, or you could just throw a Mortarian at people with his four warlord traits now and just be like deal with him or run away wait you can't run away seems interesting that's the one that caught my eye Mm. out of the contagions that they did leak because i love having the move speed of people because that's very powerful now i don't think we've gotten your opinion as how do you feel about the new disgusting resilience being Minus one damage instead of a feel no pain. The question would be, I don't. I mean, I don't mind it to be honest. It is what it is. I think it's probably makes the game go faster, which is probably better because sometimes you get this weird feeling where you're like, well, if this one plague marine lives, he has to make six feel no pains. It's highly unlikely that he does, but I'm gonna roll out six feel no pains just because if he does survive, I net three points or whatever. So it kind of gets rid of that, and you know, it is what it is. I really don't mind it either way. It's like they were making changes to the game anyway. So losing the feel no pain army wide, but having minus one damage is a fair trade. Okay. It takes away dice rolling. It makes it go faster. Yeah. Well, anything to speed up a three hour game. Uh, We got some news about the Death Shroud Terminators here. Uh, Being able to hit harder and run faster. I don't know how much faster they're going to be able to run because we didn't get that information, but uh, they got... It's interesting because the... Sorry to cut you off totally. Um, <laughs> the Catafactory army gives them the plus four in bone and makes them half the advance. I know Space Marines got some treatment to their Relic Terminator armor, correct? Because it used to be a four up and they couldn't... They have their advance rolls, right? Yeah, now it's just Terminator armor with different options. <laughs> be doing the same thing to them because they had the Catafractory armor. Hmm. Uh, I still see them having a 4 up interval, unlike the Space Marine version. But I, it, I, you know, I think it's nice that they got the movement buff. I'm, you know, that I think it's cool. Makes or, them less, like a, you know. <laughs> they could also be referring to the new and extra advance, which means they can't be slowed below, below base speed or whatever. So, like, I played a game where we had runes in the middle or sorry uh my what is it forest in the middle of the field and i didn't do anything because the only way to approach the enemy was to go through the runes so my plague marines moved two and a half inches each turn and then by turn five i did nothing but stand in a forest so an actual advance now gets rid of that so you get to just move your five there you go so they could be referring to that with the death shroud too that now they can't be they don't have to worry about terrain as much or Doom Bolt and Warp Reality. 
Hmm. Okay, well, I guess that would make them a lot faster. They're also hitting harder, because now they're hitting on a 2+, plus, apparently. I don't know. I didn't know any of the basic stat lines of the Death Shroud Terminator, so... If well, they, they always... hit on 3s, not hit on 2s. Um, something that they showed as well is that they now have a different profile for their weapon, where they get it's weaker, but you get more attacks. I think that's pretty cool for clearing out chaff. Yeah, they have a um, cleave and scythe. Yeah. Which, uh, we just talk about that for a second. I mean, what aren't you already cleaving with a scythe? The wording <laughs> is very weird on it, but I'm a huge fan of having two separate weapon profiles for like yeah. a weapon because it just makes it where you're like you don't feel bad if 30 orc boys charge you. You're like, well, I only have eight attacks, I'm only gonna kill eight a turn. Where you can get like, oh, I now have 16 attacks. This doesn't feel like a losing battle. I know. I just, just having that dynamic to, part. I just wanted to state how it, you know, it's a scythe. And you already oh. cleave with the scythe. It's just kind of weird. Yeah, I read that like five times. I'm like, why does the cleave minus one to hit more strength? Shouldn't that be the AOE type thing? And then I'm like, wait, the scythe. This is really confusing. Yeah, it's weird, but it's funny. I like the harp on them. I like the harp on their wording. Wording. All right. And then let's see what else we got here. Custom Crusade, Crintagent. Uh, it'd be fun if we played a lot of the Crusade. We'll have to. We'll get back into it eventually. Uh, and then we got the uh, floated uh, bow drones getting close combat, getting a little lawnmower stealing stealing from Slanesh, I see. I'm actually pumped about that because I had two of them. And I was playing them a lot in the beginning of the eighth edition or ninth edition, and I found them really good, but they were just a little bit too expensive for what you wanted to do. So having them go down in price is pretty solid. I'm pretty like happy to actually have painted those up and have them ready to go. But are you excited for the close combat? Oh yeah, I used only the flesh mower. They oh. were like discount demon princes where you just throw them at something and they clear something off an objective for you. But when they're hitting on fours, they really could use some support. So now that they're hitting on threes, that makes them more independent and stuff. Wait, was this was this always a thing? The flesh mower? Yeah. I've just I've never seen anyone use it. No, because yeah. everyone takes the flamers. I like the flesh mower. I didn't. I never built up any of my blood drones because plague versus crawlers were better because they were like the same price. It's like you take something with ten wounds, or you take something with, or you take the plague versus crawler because it's unkillable, right? Mm -hmm. But now that the prices have come down and the game plays differently, I found these guys really nice. It's just they were still too expensive to use. So the fact that, in the fact they got discounted. It's pretty nice. The flesh mower was AP3, though, so it was really good at killing Primaris bodies. That was, like, the main reason I took it, to just throw it at scouts or intercessors standing on a rejecto because it would just kill them. Or I'd roll a bunch of threes and be like, man, I wish this had better ballistic skill or weapon skill, and then... We also saw them less mad because you could only build that from the multi-kit, and when Dark Imperium came out, everyone had the flamer ones and the flamer ones were the best one anyway so people will just use the flamer ones yeah well i mean that's what i expected yeah so now, now it's good that they're making the other options more valuable i thought this was like just a brand new kit for it i didn't even know nope the... i've had two of them built for like a year now hmm. like 90 percent painted okay then well uh was there anything else you guys found interesting in these uh two articles before we uh, talk about some point changes for these guys, uh, not really. I, th I think. I mean, I, I I love. I have a tiny Death Guard army, and I love the Terminators. So seeing Death Shroud getting a buff is great. Yeah. That's the one unit I don't actually own is the Death Shroud, and I'm always tempted to pick them up just to give Mortarian more wounds. Time to pick them up. There you go. <laughs> get a get a bunch of uh, the combat patrols and just make Typhus clones into Death Shrouds. Well, there we go. Perfect. That sounds like my type of army. 800 box walkers and a character. <laughs> a bunch of typhus death, death shrouds. There you go. Okay, then. Uh, let's, talk, uh, let's talk point changes, shall we? The other note is Mortarian gets four warlord traits. Right? Oh, yeah. That's what we read from there. He actually yeah. has four active warlord traits. Like, I'm not crazy there. That's what it no, says. He, uh, yeah, he does. Yep. Okay, and then the second question is, is I well, think it's revoltingly I resilient. 
Well, no, because he gets the on his stat sheet, he takes one of the contagion things. Right. Yes. So then he'd have four warlord traits. Revoltingly resilient used to be reroll or plus one to your save or reroll ones. I forgot which one on the disgusting resilient. Now that you don't have a feel no pain, do we think that's going to be minus two damage? That'd be amazing. And it would be interesting to see. But would Melissa it be that much of an effective? Me, uh, well, Melissa was asking me the other day, we we're just having this conversation. She's like, why didn't you ever finish painting Mortarian? Why don't you use him that much? I'm like, uh, he's not, he just kind of dies. And then like the next day they post this and he has four warlord traits. And it's like, well, maybe, maybe I finish him now. <laughs> but I went through all like the negatives and still, you know, it depends. Being minus two could be pretty good. Toughness eight, they really helped him out and they didn't increase his price at all. I'm, I'm pretty happy with him. I just kind of forgot how cool this model is. <laughs> like, my gosh, that, that is a that is a dope demon prime mark. I, I I like Magnus better as a character, but this is a way better model than Magnus, in my opinion. I like Magnus. He has really nice toned muscles and stuff. He was really in the paint. <laughs> uh, side note, though, this you know this multitude of warlord traits may mean that Magnus and Gilliman being prime marks may have several warlord traits which is cool and it fits their lore here are these super you know super smart commanders that can read like a million excel sheets per minute according to the novels so it'd be cool to have to see them have more warlord traits at once make them more valuable too because that's the one thing because now that they separated the supreme command out right where you have to make him your warlord to get your points back being locked to like art contaminator on mortarian isn't the best because like you're either not going to have him on the table turn one, or he's going to come in and you have to warp time him to your army to get Archandaminator. You, so you never want to make him your warlord, right? Now that he could have it and he has all these other traits, it makes it a little, little bit more possible. Yeah. Definitely, we'll see a lot more Mortys, maybe. You still have other armies that need to come out, though. Probably change the meta, but for now, Morty's looking pretty, pretty nice. Or a quarter of your army. If you're playing 2k. Okay, then. So, now. I think we're good, right? We can move on to the points? Yep. Alright. Well, let's move on to the points, shall we? So. All in all. Going with the uh, HQs here. So, Chaos Lord went up five points. That's fine because now he should have discuss he'll have the disgusting resilient natively and the T five. So like the clunky thing about Death Guard for a while is all the generic chaos stuff didn't get Death Guard stuff. So like if you took just a sorcerer, not a malignant blade caster, he was T four and didn't have disgusting resilient. Same with the Chaos Lord. So the fact that now they're being fully enveloped into the Death Guard army with the extra toughness and discussing resilience, you'll probably see some more point increases across the generic chaos guys, which I'm fine with. Are you sure he's getting it though? Going I'm, from the source, it doesn't. I mean, I would assume. Sure. I'm fairly sure that they wouldn't leave the clunkiness of Death Guard, where some guys have six inch ores, other guys have seven inch ores. Some guys are T4, some guys are T5. They increase the toughness on the whatchamacallit, the zombie dudes that I'm... Foxwalkers. Foxwalkers got a toughness increase and stuff. So I'm going to assume that they're going to do that across all of them. I'd be surprised if they didn't. Hmm. Okay, then. I pay extra points for the plague, the Malefic Plague Caster over a Death Guard Chaos Sorcerer just for the Tiffness 5 and Disgusting Resilient. Is what I was doing before this Codex came out and stuff in 9th edition. Okay. Uh, the Demon Prince, he went down 20 points. It's now 140 from 160. 175 with wings. Yeah. Which, um, I'm pretty sure I had one in every one of my list, and I probably still will. Which is nice, since now it's not 200 points. Yeah. I can understand why they increased the price of them, and I would like to blame Zinch a little bit for that, because, like, that whoa, was, like, whoa, whoa. Don't be pointing huge. the finger at us. I mean... Death Guard Demon Princess didn't do anything but let everyone reroll wounds, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's still pretty powerful. I guess. <laughs> yeah, Zinch. I like Zinch Demon Princess. Everything up. I have a ton of Demon Princes. I love Demon Princes. 
I only got two. That's all I need. Uh, Lord Contagion went up five points. It's now 120. I got no input on this one only because it's like you you only you don't really take him. He's not really something you look at and you're like, I'm gonna this guy fits in here because you take a cast lord or something else instead. Or you take like a sorcerer and terminator armor if you're gonna go with like a deep strike bomb type thing. Why is the why is the Lord Contagion so bad then? Why he's we... just he's expensive and he doesn't do what you need him to do. Like if you're brain, he doesn't reroll ones. You have to pay a stratagem to give him reroll ones. If I recall correctly, he moves four inches, and his aura was I don't remember it off the top of my head. Hmm. But he's not a chaos lord. He didn't give you rerolls, or he wasn't amplifying that part of it. Oh, he generated mortal wounds on the fight phase, I believe. Yeah. So like, if you don't stuff like that. Okay then. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna take a mortal wound within seven inches. Yeah. The Lord variants, the uh, the tank buffer is gonna be 120 points, as well. We'll see what other rules he gets. I mean, who knows? Yeah, I'll have to wait and see. Uh, Playcaster went down five. It's now 95 points. I'm fine with that. Just like I talked about earlier, that I would pay the extra. I was paying the extra points because the cast sorcerer is 90. I pay the extra 10 just to have. T5, feel no pain. Yeah, and then uh, got Sorcerers and Termi, Termi Lords looking similar, and Typhus being unchanged in terms of points. So not much not much going for those three. Uh, troop choices. Uh, I was right when we first talked about the uh, uh, baby marines getting a wound increase. It's three points. Three points up for the Plague Marines to go from 18 to 21 points. It might still be too cheap. That's right? really cheap, considering they have plus one wound and plus one attack, in my opinion, which they're is still, great for Death Guard players. They're still T5, correct? Or they're is still that T5. Not... Oh, they're yeah. still T5. T5, is... minus one damage. Yeah, I think that's still probably too cheap. I think originally when I was talking to people, like, oh, do you think you're going to get your feel no pain? Probably 23 points. I'm like, if they're 23 points, two wounds, feel no pain, that's too cheap. They need to be like way higher. So, like, 21 minus one damage, that's pretty obscene. I think we'll see that going up at some point. Mm, I don't think so. I think, I think that's maybe like one more point. Maybe. We'll see how it plays out. Because uh, I guess they are vulnerable to just normal bolt or fire. Yeah. Survive the heavy bolters at least, right? Yep. Uh Cultus, good news. Went down a point. Where they probably should have been. Yeah, like five points. Probably five. less, but you know, I'll take the five over the six. Are they still more are they still more expensive than guardsmen? Someone remind me. They're the same now. They're the same. Okay. Cool. So uh thank God that means Thousand Sons in regular chaos will be having a five point cultus soon. TM. TM trademark. Exactly. Uh Pops... they the price by the time they get here above. <laughs> yeah, well, let's... let's just hope they stay at five. Uh Poxwalkers also went down to five points. If they down keep their seven. fearless, that's huge. If they keep their fearless? Because right now they're fearless. I would actually take I would fit them in most of my list of just like one unit and having them be fearless was so much more annoying. Because you can't just force any type of uh, morale on them or anything. Even though morale got better for cultists, the fact that you just ignore morale completely was really huge for those guys and it was worth the extra 10 points in some of these games or some of these. Things. So having them match the cultists, it's like interesting. So it makes me think that they might not remain fearless. So that would be the keeping point for you? If they lost fearless, you wouldn't drop them? Um, they're T4, so they're a little bit more durable. But if they're T4 and fearless, I'm definitely spending 150 points probably on them per, in each list. Hmm. Okay. And no benefit for some DR, which, you know... Of course, makes sense. There are only one wound models, so the minus one damage doesn't make any sense. Yep. 
Um, well, quick question on the Poxwalkers. Uh, they don't have a save, do they? Aren't they like a 7 plus? Yeah, 7 up. So they basically one shot dead, right? Yeah, but you still have to put 10 shots on them to kill them. Okay, so I see. Where... Putting like 5 shots on them and then having the rest fail morale. All right, so I see where you're saying that the Mara uh, our Fearless will come into play. Yeah, plus you could also use the strategic reserves in the beginning to have them outflank and raise banners on other places, out of line of sight, where you don't have as much shooting on them. They become very useful. Okay. Uh, spawns, unchanged, blow drones, down 25 points, going from 155 to 30. That's... Uh... The mower is five points, and the blight launchers are ten points. So I think it's one thirty-five or whatever for the mulchers now, instead of one fifty-five, if I recall correctly, or one sixty-five, which is really nice. You might see more of them now, especially with the what are the other guys called? I don't, I never took them, but they were always good, and people loved them. And the guy would ring the bell. They would bring the oh, the great and, unclean one. He'd ring the bell, and he'd bring back the blight. Blight the white haulers. haulers, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I was never a fan of them. Them going up to be like the same cost as a plague burst crawler, they're probably not going to see much play unless they get a big rules revamp. Well, that's what we're talking about next. The blight haulers they went up forty points, but that's huge. but they gained an extra wound and plus one ballistic skill, which I think. Uh, Pretty much all the vehicles got plus one plus skill, right? Yeah, all the demon, yeah, all engines. The demon engines. Yeah, demon engines. Whatever. Um, uh, I don't know. Do you think white haulers will still be taken, especially with the great unclean one with the dinner bill? I don't think so. I don't. I'm not. I've never been a fan of the white haulers. Like that's. I see their value and I see them being good, but that's not really my style of play is a horde of vehicles that kind of is just resilient that have mediocre shooting. So the fact that they get better shooting, maybe it's better, but I don't know. They're kind of meh in my eyes. It's an extra 40 eyes. points right there. I think I think people who like them will not feel hurt taking a unit of three, like they always do. But I don't think they're spammable as they used to be. Like I used to see lists with like nine of them. I don't think that's happening anymore. That, that is way too expensive. Nine of them, that's an extra, what, like 360 points? <laughs> you know? I don't think that's happening. Yeah. But interesting to see. Um, Next we got on this list, we got elites. So Blight Lords went down three points with uh, three wounds, and the flail is five points. I'm now, so curious to see if the flail will be the same as it is right now. That's flail, what I'm curious about. That's really the, that's the only reason I want to see the book is to see if the flail's the same. But uh, losing three, losing thirty point or gaining thirty points off Blight Lord Terminators, like I always bring ten. Like I didn't, I never brought less than ten. But they're huge. I love them. They're great. I'm happy. Uh, Just leave the flails the same. I'll play an extra. I'll play an extra fifteen points for those flails. Yeah, well, and the flails. I think the only weapon in forty k where. The wounds actually spill over when you, when you attack someone, right? Deathwing flails, which is also a flail. The Deathwing don't get D3 attacks on Death of the False Emperor every time it procs and stuff, right? Uh, I don't think so. Think so, no. so you could have two guys churning out 18 attack. Disgusting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it lost however, they do have that stupid permanent dis um, transhuman, though. Human, the one that only the, wins them on a four plus, right? Yes, the unit that can take those fails can all be wounded on a four up or or less. Transmutation, something like that. I don't remember. Uh, Death Shrouds. We were just talking about these guys. They went up three points, and uh, we got a question mark here with the chimes of contagion is possibly being fifteen points. Time, I believe, increases the range of the contagion for characters, if I recall correctly. There's something with increasing the range of the contagion. Hmm. Okay. So, I don't know. I don't think this really hurts them that much, especially since uh, apparently they're going to be getting faster 
and they got that plus one to their weapon skill. So these guys could still be these guys are probably still gonna be monsters to deal with. Uh possessed. The possessed bomb, the famous possessed bombs. Uh went up four points. And they now have four attacks instead of D three attacks. They yeah. have plague weapons. Yeah. They if you happen to put like a Herald of Nurgle in a different detachment, they're now on sixes, two damage a piece and stuff. So I feel like they can still get fairly nasty, especially if Cloud of Flies rolls over into ninth edition. They're definitely something I'm looking at once the book comes out. And they're T five. Oh. So they're gonna they're gonna come in pretty hard. Uh Hell Brood, they said the loadout's pretty much the same. Tally Man and Plague Surgeon, plus 10 points. That one's also interesting, because the Plague Surgeon, why is he going up if the Disgusting Resilience is changing? Because he gives the reroll one, or the reroll ones and twos if you spend a stratagem on him. So, like, his value of rerolling Disgusting Resilience isn't there. So he must be getting something that is pretty sizable to make him val that valuable, I guess. Maybe he'll act like an apothecary. You know, just the just the death guard version of an apothecary. Yeah, let me just pick up some three wound death guard terminators. Hey, yeah, could be. I mean, you guys you guys spend a strategy for that, but. And then the blightbringer and the blight spawn are unchanged. Moving on to heavy transports and mortarians. Land Raider Predators, pretty much the same. Plague vs. Crawlers went up 5 points. I but... thought they dropped 5, but I think it depends on oh, the sorry, 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 you're right. They went down 5 points. Maybe right Entropy there. the more expensive choice, because the Plague Spitters used to be plus 5 points, and Entropy were uh, for free or whatever, and now I think they swapped them. Yeah. If I recall correctly, the Entropy, I thought I saw something where they were, instead of being D6 damage, they're D3 plus 3 now. Which I wonder how that would work with the accelerated entropy stratagem, which means you ignore one, twos, and threes, which means they're just flat six damage. For fr I'm pretty sure that stratagem is probably gone if that's the case, but it's interesting if it is. Yeah, I would assume that'd be gone because I don't think I don't think they would want to have a flat six damage there. I mean, granted, Silent King's thing is like a flat six damage at strength twelve or whatever, but. I don't think they want to have these machines being able to do output that much damage like that. Uh, Defilers are now 165 base. And of course, since the Demon Engine gets the plus one Blizzard skill. I don't know. How do you guys feel about the Defilers? Uh, I've had one back in the day. Matt knows this. Back in Northern Shore, built one. Probably would never do so ever again. Cool model. Just kind of kind of done with that. Card's really good though. Depends on if contaminated monstrosity is still a thing. That's the stratagem that gives it a feel no pain. Yeah, well, I guess we would have to wait and see if that's still a thing. Seeing how feel no pain pretty much doesn't exist in this army anymore. Yep. So it'd be interesting to see if that stays, or if you can spend a stratagem to give something a feel no pain, because that kind of makes the chaos spawn who stayed the same point wise. They were really good with discussing the resilient. They were really problematic. So now that they're going to lose that, it, it's interesting. I'm curious what's going to go. Okay, uh, rhinos go up two points, make it make it eighty points now. So not really that big of a change. Uh, Matorian Morty stays the same at four ninety, and the terrain pieces which. Can deploy up to half, half way across the board. Are at seventy five points. I don't know. Do you see these oh. having much uh, impact? One day, maybe we'll have terrain for forty k that's worth worth paying the points for. I think the sisters <laughs> one is playable, but that's kind of it. Yeah, could get the free miracle dice. Back in the day, I would run the feculent all Mars, and people looked at me when I'm crazy when I said I'm going to put my I'm going to put my tree in deep strike. They're like, what? I'm putting my tree in deep strike, and I started deep striking trees and stuff. 
you know, they're cool to like fall back and shoot and do cool things with, but like terrain's always kind of weird. It still takes a detachment too, correct? Yeah. 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 It's like the biggest flaw is like with chaos, you still sometimes are put you're you're pushing three detachments pretty often still. Not as much as like eighth edition, but like still, it's just if it didn't eat a detachment, I think you'd see more terrain to be honest. You just got to be careful with your, det your detachments as well, just because, you know, CP is valuable at times, and only getting one a turn is not always worth it. But uh, I think that's all the major stuff. Uh, I don't really, if you want to give any insight on the deadly pathogens, I don't really know anything about that. That's like a weapon upgrade or an upgrade to things or whatever. So, like, you spend an extra 10 points, and I believe, like, Vicious Death might let you reroll the number of shots, so you put that on the Flame Guy. Um, I forgot what the other one they leaked was, but you just... That's just going to be, like, a time will tell thing. Does this guy really need rerolls there? Or does this guy need this? 20 points, 10 points seems like a lot in some cases, but it depends what they all do. Okay, so we don't really know what any of them are I believe the only one that was leaked was probably Vicious Death, which is re-rolling the number of shots. Yes. So just give that to whatever has a flamer. But, like, there's a stratagem for that in some cases. So is the stratagem going away? What's, you know, so it's just kind of, until we see the book, I don't know. All right, then. Well, then that's all the points. So what are your, what are your thoughts? Uh, I'll, let's go with John first. John? Uh, I want to say my thoughts last. Oh, okay then. Uh, I'll go with my thoughts. Uh, well, it's a future of what we're going to see to come to all the other future, right? For normal spa Chaos Space Rains, they're going up three points. Uh, cultist, I like the Cultist change. That's going to be nice. Being able to spam my Cultist and that's been... How many points are there? There's six points right now. I feel like they should be a lot less, but whatever. You know, you know, GW, they like to keep the numbers nice and round. Um, the Terminators, I'm not looking forward to them because I hate fighting. I hate fighting the uh, Death Guard Terminators. They're already hard enough to kill, and giving them that plus one is going to be awful. And for only 40 points. And give them that flail. I wish that flail was a little bit more expensive than what it is. But who knows if it's still keeping its rules of uh, rolling over its wounds over to the next person. That's what's going to be key for that. Um, Morty's 490 points. That's, that's fine. I don't. I think if he was any higher, I think it'd be a little too much. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be worth it if it was you know five hundred plus points and overall I mean everything else pretty much got points decrease so hopefully it'll be strong enough to run a mono esque death guard army and not having to soup but we'll have to see what the other chaos factions offer when they get their books. What about you, Greg? How do you feel about these points? Well, I like them. I wish I had them a little bit ago because uh, I definitely have enough free points to not have to cut stuff that I wanted to. <laughs> I, you know, with like my old list, I could fit in two cast sorcerers from double warp times. You know, if the first one dies or gets stuck, it frees up almost like two hundred points or so just on kind of what I usually take. Now, which. Would you run a pure Death Guard army, or would you stoop it still? Depends on the rest of, like, who does what, because I was really a big fan of having the Foul Blight spawn eat a warp time, and then you got range to his gun, and then just shoot stuff like turn one. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> so you could make a high priority target turn one if they deploy too close. Mm -hmm. And then he just kind of dies, but it's like, whatever, he costs nothing, and it was just a warp time. And it's I find warp time in Death Guard very useful for but like the fact that in actual advance gets rid of being slowed, maybe it's not as necessary. 
because now you don't you're not stuck moving like a couple inches over something you do right but Water of Time is just such a powerful spell, especially when everything you have is flamers, that I, it's hard to think not having that guy in there. But I also like trying to be pure in some cases. And it's pretty easy, too. I still think you run into, until you see the stratagems, I still think you run into the conundrum of you don't have enough points to run Plague Marines and Light Lord Terminators. You're either running Terminators or Plague Marines. They kind of fill the same role mm -hmm. with like the point reductions or increases and stuff like it's still you don't have enough resources on the command points to power both of them the biggest thing is the possessed even though they went up four points i'm really curious what else we can do with them i mean they're gonna be they could be a big threat like they were and the tail end of a uh, eighth edition, but yeah, eighth edition. Because without knowing like some of the special rules of the like, if Cloud of Flies is gone, it changes how I look at Death Guard as a whole. If something else is gone, uh, like they change like the Iron Clot Furnace, that's the four up invo on like your stuff, your demon engines, that's pretty good. Or the uh, Noxus Blightbringer has the five up invo on the bell that takes the value away from some of the stuff. So seeing points, it's cool. I'd like to see more of the rules, but you know, I'll see that next week. What was that uh, spell slash stratagem where you had to uh, you casted it on like the possess bomb, and they couldn't be targeted unless they were the closest? That's uh, cloud of flies. That's cloud of flies. Okay, I thought cloud of flies was the uh, minus one to hit. No, that's Miasma of Pestilence. Miasma of Pestilence is a Death Guard and Nurgle spell. Cloud of Flies is just a Death Guard stratagem. Got it. Okay. Like, that let you just start Blight Lords on the table if you wanted, or start a big blob of Plague Marines. Like, you didn't have to worry about Rhinos. You're like, good luck killing three Plague Burst Crawlers. I'll just Cloud of Flies these Plague Marines for two turns, and then they're going to be in your face, and you'll have to figure it out. Okay. Okay. Well, any final thoughts there? Or pass it on to John. Follow the fetid Blight Jones. I'm excited. More flesh mowers. <laughs> All right, John. What do you got? Uh, I think this army is DOA. Uh, I don't see Death Guard being competitive at all because they are not Space Marines. And only Space Marines are competitive, is what the internet says. <laughs> All you are wrong. They're not Space Marines, so therefore they are trash. Memes aside, um, I, again, I have a small Death Guard army. I am pretty excited with the discounts and rules improvements to the basic infantry because um, uh, for you for you guys who know, I play Bl Black Legion as my main army, and I like to build like mini armies of the different legions in black and gold. So I have a small Death Guard force, and it's all infantry. I only have the Terminators, the Plague Marines, the HQs, not even any Poxwalkers, just the guys who were there in the, during the Heresy. So I'm pretty happy. I'm very happy with the death row changes. I'm very happy that Plague Marines only got a minor points increase, in my opinion, for what they gained. Like, freaking plus one win, plus one attack for, like, no more than, like, less than five points. That's that's pretty awesome to me. So overall, I'm pretty excited about this change. Definitely going to pick up the book. Maybe it's an excuse to play some smaller games with, with some, like, thousand-point games with my, my, my black and gold death guard screaming for the War Master. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited. Maybe some I forgot about teams. the one attack on Plague Marines. That's huge yeah. too because they play flail. Yeah, because they're gonna get flails. And and well, we don't know if they're gonna keep hateful assault. Uh, some people are saying it's they're not getting hateful assault. The trade off being they always get plus one attack, which I'm fine with. But if they do get hateful assault, which is the plus one attack on the charge on top of that, that's crazy. You're seeing three, you know, three attacks with the flail, which explode, you know, three d three that splash. So, yeah, yep. it's exciting. I don't know. That's why I said I'm not happy about the Terminators, but you know. I'm sure I'll be fighting a lot of that with uh, mm -hmm. put your and Raul. And you auto win, because that's that's how it goes according to to the end of it. <laughs> I'll have to run my space marines then. That divine shiver, whatever the black templars have, is a pretty sick trick though. Um, oh yeah. yeah. Well, if we're done talking about this, we could talk about the hobby. So I'll just turn this off. So, yeah, hobbying. Uh, I'll start off this one. So uh, I did a Black Templar game this week. 
And uh, I did exploit that uh, that 24, 20, 26 inch charge that the the, the Black Templars could do. And uh, that is stupid, I must say. 27? If you use the incurse, the whatever the Primaris guy is, the Primaris tank. Wait, what? The Primaris tank? Yeah. Whatever the Primaris transport is, the incursor, inner, whatever, you know what I'm talking about. Doesn't that give you 27 inch threat range, or am I missing something? Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, I, I just used the Impulsor, which is 14 inches, the 3 inch deployment, the 6 inch move. That's a. Uh, 23 right there and then the devout push is just a pile in which is another so three inches part of that move, though, because you're not actually making a charge did you advance it's not a charge move right just a pile in and consolidate uh, i didn't think you could advance out of the uh out of the impulsor but then again i didn't really read it i just read the part where you couldn't charge out of the impulsor I like, double check that. But I'm pretty sure you can advance when you get out of stuff. No. Well, there you go. So you can get like a, you can go very far if you really wanted to. But uh, yeah, I did that. I fought against uh, it was Blood Angels versus Black Templars, and I happened to get the first turn. Uh, I didn't have Blade Guard in the Intercessors. I kind of had a uh, two units of three just walk them across the board. I put uh, assault intercessors inside the impulsors, and yeah, that was. You have to safe bet because then you're not throwing away like a high value unit, assault intercessors or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I, I got them into combat. I I, I of course whiffed because I'm great at rolling. I don't know. My luck is uh, turn one and turn two, I do like terrible, and then three, four, five, I do great. I don't know why. It just Early game, I'm terrible. Late game, I'm great. So if you want to, you want to beat me, you could crush me early game as your best chance, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, it was fun to use that devout push. I only used it once because, I mean, he's blood angels, so he he took a lot of death company. He took a lot of uh, the golden boys. I don't remember what they're called. Mary guard. Wait, wait, what guard? Mary guard. Yeah, he took he took ten of those. So, uh, by the end of the game, that was the only unit left because I just <laughs> I couldn't kill them. They were too powerful. Uh, the Eradicators, uh, I now see why are so stupid, as they just shoot everything off the board with their twenty four inch melta gun. I think I took out I took out seven seven Death Company with them just one round of shooting i was like these guys these guys need to get a point increase and next day they got the five point increase i do think they're kind of swingy i played a game where they like one shot out of keeper secrets and exceeded the health its health pool by like six damage but then the next game they like did half damage to a like ha they took half the health off a of chaos knight so um, D6 damages can get pretty swingy, but I do agree they're they're damn good, and I never run home or you know leave home without them in my 2K list. Oh, just the threat of them too, because you can't now if you're playing like as demons, you know there's going to be meltas coming off the side of the board, or deep striking or whatever, where you can't be within 24 inches of right. So you're going to put nerglings or pink horrors to just try to buy you an extra turn. Mm hmm makes it harder to score points and stuff and do stuff just the threat of them it was uh pretty interesting and uh i'd have to give my i have to give my mvp to my apothecary for saving uh high marshal hellbrick being able to give him an uh, feel no pain save uh saved his life from uh i forget the name of that one that one Blood Angels character. It's not Dante. It's some other character with a jump pack. The Sentinel or uh, Lamartes. I don't remember his name. Sorry, but uh, yeah, that was uh, was close. But uh, by the end, I had the board control, and all he had left was the uh, just the Golden Boys flying around. 
which I couldn't did really do any, much to. Do you have any jump infantry? I did. I had uh, well, I can just say my list really fast. I had I took two detachments. I took a patrol and a vanguard. Patrol was Grimald, no Emperor's Champion. Two assault intercessors. Uh, three aggressors and two impulsors. And the vanguard was Helbrek, Grimald, Grimaldus, uh, Judicator, Judicar, however you say it. Uh, two squads of three, Blade Guard, Prime Chief, Primaris Apothecary, with a War War trait to you know give my guys out for free. Five Eradicators. And a rhino. Oh, and a squad of five tactical. Um, as oh, and right? uh, sorry, and five man vanguard unit with jump packs with a uh, storm shield and chain sword. Okay, there you go. I find well, first off, do both of you guys like running five man eradicators, or would you have, rather have two three mans? Because I think playing versus it, I'd much rather. I I find it. Harder to go against two or three three man units versus one or two bigger ones. I've yet to run two three mans. I usually run one five man. And for listeners who are asking why not run six, well, if they're five or less, um, transhuman is one CP instead of two, which is pretty huge for the survivability, saving that CP. Um, and but blast. I, I have yeah, and blast as well, but. I do. I I want to try out the two three man just for the flexibility and all that, because there's not many stratagems that require them to be one unit. I mean, like if you transhuman one, I don't think they'll have been like, and you're smart with the other one. I don't think they could delete the other one easily or or whatever. Um, I think the trade off of flexibility and increased firepower is worth having a, you know, having two squads instead of one for purposes of stratagems and all that. Now. Going off of that for something like Blade Guard, where adaptive strategy, which is the the two CP strat that makes it that makes a unit into any doctrine, putting them in the assault doctrine. As you know, I play White Scars for my I play White Scars chapter. Um, or use the rules. I mean, that I would prefer just having a one one five man unit as opposed to two three men just for that purpose. That no, has won me games, but for yeah, eradicators, I I want to try two three men. Um, I think it's worth testing out. I don't know. I'm uh, we'll have to see because I still gotta do some point adjustment since now you know it went up five points. So I'd have to cut some stuff off my list and see what I can take. But I could give it a try. I don't know yet though. The five man worked out just fine in my opinion. I just feel like it ends up being overkill, and you're better off with having because you only get the double fire if you shoot the same, same target. target. So, like, having the two, three, they can still shoot at the same target if it's a knight or something. It's not like you're losing much, but then you're not also overkilling uh, Lehman Russes and stuff like that. That's true. Yeah, you're right, actually. That's a good point. It lets you split fire and still get the extra... The ex Sorry, the extra extra shots. Because there are yeah. times where, like, I shoot, like, you know, I don't know, like, a decimator, right? And that's overkill for... 12 melter shots, and I think 6 will do the job just fine. Well, and then I just painted up my apothecary, because, you know, MVP. So, that that was my hobby week. What about you, John? How was it? Just, how, do any hobbying? Uh, not a lot of... Uh, yeah, not a lot of gaming, but I'm working... Again, the the Star Wars Legion hype is... The hype train is, is moving, so I've been painting my ARC Troopers. Uh, I built some uh, Imperial Special Forces and Commando Droids. And for for listeners who played that game, there was a huge uh, FAQ that dropped like in 40k that like kind of gave a huge discounts to most every unit, especially units that didn't see as much play. Um, for example, like uh, pulling out of my head, like uh, Wookiees were pretty bad, but now with a points decrease, people are starting to play them some more. So I have all these units that are just sitting in my shelf because they suck because they're overcosted, and then now you know they they they're seeing some play because of the points adjustment. So I'm trying to like paint some of those that I uh 
I've yet to uh, to paint and looking forward to playing games with them. Uh, so not a lot of Warhammer, but I did get the Lion, and he is now here. So maybe I will be have a little more Dark Angels hype. I'm going to proxy him as a Gulliman in 40k and, uh, and drop him on the table and see how that goes. So it should be fun. Does the Lion have a helmet? Did they yes, make that variation? I mean, I love, I think his face is a great sculpt, but I'm just a sucker for unique Primark helmets. So he will definitely be getting a helmet. There you go. Is it easy to magnetize? Probably. I should probably magnetize it, honestly. Head uh, socket. It's just going to be like a pretty easy one. Yeah. But if I had the choice, I would put the, the winged helmet on, considering it's also like a big deal. It's a relic. Uh, Ezreal has, you know, has the lion helms, which is kind of cool. But yeah, there we go. It's a quick, quick hobby summary for me. And but you. Greg, did you do any hobby? No, been busy. Picked up a bunch of other stuff. Uh, basically, all I'm working on is like the Custodes Commission, which is just a bunch of Forge World stuff and a couple of troops. But I'm kind of slogging away at it slowly because busy and waiting for magnets to show up in specific paints that I wanted. Now, is that a crazy paint scheme or was it just like spray um, paint gold? Gold, purple, but like I'm going to do the gold nice and stuff. I don't you like using just like a, a normal gold. I'm gonna go with like a copper because like all the big Forge World uh custode stuff just look like bananas and stuff. Like you can't just paint it gold and then throw some accent colors on it because it's just gonna look weird. So I'm gonna go with like a deep copper to give it some like gradient and texture and make it not look like just a banana. Well, I look forward to seeing those pictures whenever those get done. Yeah, one of them, one was really warped, like the top part of, what is it, the carriers, they're all grab something, I'm not very familiar with custodes, um, was like probably bent, like arced, I'd say like almost 45 degrees and it's supposed to be flat, and that took a while, and like some really big uh, clamps to hold it together just to get it to stick, but I was, like, I was hey. surprised. It was like the worst I've seen in a while. Hopefully, you got paid extra for that. Yeah. Well then, well I I think I plan on gaming this week. I have to just check with the group, see what's going on. But uh, you guys got any more closing thoughts before we wrap this up? Um, kind of weird with this two uh, every other week release schedule for Games Workshop. Considering, you know, I've been used to just something new every week for the past, what, like three years? <laughs> so it does give me time to, uh, to work on stuff as opposed to just planning new projects, you know, kind of thing. So, yeah, something we're used to. Well, I think the whole pushback kind of messed up the whole release schedule on when they wanted to leak all the news. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, like, Death Guard was supposed to be out last month. That's right. So we got basically a whole month of tease of the Death Guard. That was, that was pretty much it. And that's why the news was pretty barren, because they're just like, here's a here's a little crumb for you guys. Here you go. Analyze this as much as you like. Is Cloudfly still a thing? <laughs> well, we'll find out find out next uh, two weeks, right? The book's only coming yeah. on pre order this week. Yeah, and then out next week. So two two weeks, which means I don't know. I would assume assume the seventeenth is gonna start ramping up the Dark Angels. I would assume. Hopefully, I would love the War Cry War Band to come out in January. So I don't know if they're gonna release the Codex or push the Codex back even more. Or because here's the thing, right? If something. If you had three items that were going to come, you know, a week of each other, you know, week one, week two, week three, and now they're being pushed back week one, then two weeks from then, are they going to smush the items or are they going to push it even more back? I would hope not. So who knows? We may see one of them in February instead of the end of the month. So we'll see. Well, you said Warcry. You mean Underworlds, right? Sorry, Underworlds. My bad. I'm using them for Warcry. That's, that's, I'm, I'm using all the Underworld stuff for Warcry now. Right, so. right, right. I understand. I was just making sure. Because it's like I don't remember, I don't remember any Warcry stuff being. Asked. It'd be cool, but all right then. Well, uh, Greg, thanks for 
coming by and putting your input on the uh, Death Guard for us. Probably. Really, really good to get that insight. And uh, we'll call it there. So uh, we'll see everyone next time. Later, everyone. Goodbye.